right? It takes birth, it grows, and it dies. Right? So that is the rule which is going to apply to the body. However good you nurture, okay? It has this cycle. By lot of effort, you can slow down this process of growth and decay. So it can last for a longer time. Okay. That is all that you can do. But you cannot violate this rule okay, of the planning order as far as body is concerned. Right? Self has the continuity anyway. So it continues to exist. So if you really understand the nature of the self and the body, then you can see that the self will continue to exist. right? Even if you don't want to be there, right? You cannot get rid of it. The body will not continue to exist, right? However hard you try. So you can at the most extend this process of growth and the process of decay. So instead of 100 years, you can make it last for 200 years or 300 years, you know, like that. Lot of efforts have been done, you know, on that part. But then finally, it decays. It is decaying at a slower rate. Right? Then the other body. But it will decay. Similarly, it may grow at a slower rate than the normal this thing, body, but it will grow. This is you know, nowadays a lot of experiment is done on bonsai plants. Right? So if you look at a bonsai plant, what is happening? A five year, you know, plant of this banyan thing, you will have this people. Now what is happening? The growth has been slowed down. But still there is growth or it has been stopped. There is a growth. By looking at that plant you can say that it is a five year old plant. Though the size is very small. So those kind of experiments have been done you know, in the past with the body, the human body to slow down the process of growth and decay so that you know, it can last for a little longer. But it cannot become, you know, continuous. Yeah, sure, Madhi. This uh, Harlean society, uh, this term exchange, mainly uh, uh, during the last uh, decades, what has happened is that the terms of trade between agriculture and industry. Of course, today we have seen that uh, uh, <coughs> presentation, that price and value. But the fact is that when uh, agriculturist or the farmer goes to the market, the price, the items which uh, are fetching for the agriculture or for that matter the physical labor and the professional world. So these are not in equilibrium. But of course, yes, it is true that if it is uh, free of exploitation, it can be done. But in real practice, uh, what is your experience wherever you are uh, doing the uh, like experiments uh, with the farming, how it, this actually will be established because this is the main cause otherwise uh, uh, the percentage of population which was dependent on agriculture that has gone down. And even if living in slums that is considered better uh, in the city like Delhi or other cities but people are leaving villages that, that is one of the basic causes. The people are, num number of people living on agriculture has gone down is not true. Because people are still living on agriculture. They are eating food which is grown on the agriculture, right? Not in the industry. So, that is one thing which has to be clear. That even now, we may not be producing, <coughs> right? But we are eating food which is grown in agriculture. So, that is one thing, it should be very clear, right? Or you are eating the food which is grown in industry. <coughs> so, we still, you know, eat the food which is grown in agriculture. Maybe we are not growing, right? Somebody else is growing. That is one part. The second part, if you observe this, what is happening is that the whole this, you know, system of education and then the system of advertisement and this you know, <coughs> government policy. It is forcing the farmer to come to the market. Right? 
And when the farmer comes to the market, then there is unequal term of exchange. That is the trouble, right? Yes. So the problem is not only with this unequal term of exchange. The problem is also with the fact that this farmer is getting influenced, right? By this education, by this, you know, government policy, by this, you know, advertisement, and coming to the market. Right? If out of this right understanding and right feeling, the farmer decides to grow, right? For themselves, for their nurturing of the body, you know, protection of the body, and for the nurturing and protection of the body of their relatives, right? Then you can see all these people in the city, right? All these people in the industry, they have to, after all, buy food, right? They will need food. So they have to come to the farmer, rather than farmer going to the unequal terms of trade in the market. That change has to take place. So with this, in fact, if you look at a village, for example, village community with this right understanding and right feeling. Okay? And if you look at the city, you know, with this right understanding and right feeling, what do you think? For whom it will be easier to live with this right understanding and right feeling? Yeah. A village community or a city dwellers? Of course it is a village community. It's a village community, right? The problem which is more prominent today is that this village community is getting influenced by this city, city you know, yes. dwellers. If this right understanding and right feeling you know, is there, <coughs> then this influence you know, can be overcome. We can have this authenticity, this you know, self-confidence, and we can go ahead with this. So, at places where we have tried to conduct some of these experiments ourselves, or where some of these other people have been conducting this experiment, it has turned out that this understanding and the feeling part is very significant. <laughs> if you can manage this, right? That example we showed about this Elango Ramaswamy, right? He has spent some 15 to 20 years in 20 villages, right? Now, <coughs> the 90 percent of their need is produced within these 20 villages. And they are not using this money as term of exchange, right? They have also designed their own way of keeping record of who has contributed how much, right? Now, at least for this 90% of their need, they are not dependent on the market. So they cannot be exploited, right? For the remaining 10%, they have to exchange with the market, where there is still some possibility, right? That is one thing. Second thing is that the employment which was there okay when this experiment was started 50 percent you know unemployment was there 50 percent the youth were employed now with this experiment you know, with this 20 villages 100 percent employment is there right so it is not that city is giving us employment basically city is taking away the employment right so now this 100% employment is there <coughs> and many of the youths which have left the village and gone to this, you know, this Chennai and you know, uh, nearby uh, kind of uh, cities, they have started coming back to the village. Mm -hmm. okay. So even now, with this you know, understanding, it will be possible for the village community to realize this you know, much faster than the city community. In fact, you will have to start thinking that if this is the way we go, what will happen to the city community? Because they are producing less and consuming more. Right? So they are almost parasitic. So you have to start thinking of how to reorganize the city okay, in a manner that they can produce more than what is consumed by them. Right. This unequal term of exchange is what is sustaining this you know, city community. What they are doing is that they are taking away the produce of the village by way of this unequal term of exchange. Right. 
and without producing anything. So I keep telling that if you look at Kanpur, for example, if you look at the train, you know, this local trains which come to the Kan in the city, Kanpur, from the villages, it is full of this, you know, vegetables and milk and you know, all this. You look at the same train going from Kanpur back to the village, right? It is all empty, or it has some boxes of TVs and things like that, you know. So that is all you are giving to the village, and you are taking away all this. You know, this grain and vegetables and the bills. <coughs> Somebody was telling me yesterday night that uh, in Bombay, I think Umesh, he was telling that some two uh, you know, children came from Bombay, Spanish children, and <coughs> they didn't even know that this milk comes from the cows because they have never seen cows <laughs> and they have never seen this cow with milk, you know. Okay. So it was a great fascination for them. So all this is being managed by way of this unequal terms of exchange which you are mentioning. That is true. But then this is not something human, right? This exploitation is not something human. It is inhuman. That is why these city people are more in, you know, unhappiness and depression, right? And tension and frustration and they have to take to drug. Because they are involved in inhuman activities. So both the village people have to realize and the city people have also to realize. And then come up with this right way of living. And if you think in terms of right way of living, the village community, you know, is much you know close to this, and it will be easier for them to realize in the city community. So, I understand that we are living a coexistence of I and body. So, out of curiosity, I would like to ask that if the self is I is strong enough, if it is determined and uh, clear enough, can I or self take place in more than one form of body? This is just out of curiosity. No, not in uh, the form of more than one body, but you can do something to start, you know, your association with another body. Right? So, a lot of experiment has been done by name of Tantra you know, to, uh, you know, dissociate temporarily from one body, you know, and then associate with another body for the time being. So a whole lot of experiment has been done. Okay. But I don't think that it is something worth doing. After all, whatever you want to do, you can do with, you know, association with the same body, if you have the right understanding and right feeling. And if you don't have the right understanding and right feeling, any body you associate with, you are going to create problem. <laughs> for yourself and for the other. <laughs> but yes, there is a possibility. A whole lot of work has been done on it. Okay. Whether it is worth it or not is some, you know, another question. Like I keep remembering this you know, one story that one person you know, was walking on the you know, river. So he was telling his friend that, you know, see, can you walk on the river? And he said, no, I cannot walk on the river, but I can walk on the ground. So, he said, what is so great about it? Everybody can walk on the ground. Right. So, then he said, how much time did you spend, you know, for this practice? And whatever additional thing you had to plan. He said, 20 years. Right. 20 years walking on the river, on the water, right? So, he said, what is the final achievement of this? So, he said, I can cross the river walking on the water, right? And you cannot. He said, but then it is not worth because I will pay 25 paisa to this man, <laughs> the boatman, and cross the river. Right? So if that is all that you have achieved after 20 years, 
Yeah, we discussed about this, but let me clarify for that. I said, in fact, many of the words which are used, you know, synonymously are not synonymous word, right? Like yesterday, there was some discussion in the group, yeah? evening group discussion. This rebirth and reincarnation, they are same or different? Same. Both are same. They are considered to be same. Let me tell you what is the difference. Right? Okay. <laughs> this word rebirth is not an appropriate word because what continues is the self, right? And the birth is that of the body, right? Not of the self. Okay. The birth of this body is fresh. It is not the same old body, right? So it is no a rebirth, it is just a birth of the body. That is one thing. Okay. Now, what is happening? This cell, which was associated with one body, the body has gone or you know, grown old and you know, it is not worth continuing with, so it has been disassociated. Now the cell is associating with another body. Right? So it is a reassociation with another body. Right? It is not rebirth. Because the self is not taking birth, it is continuing. The body is taking birth, which is not the same old body. So this is not a rebirth, this is just a birth of a body. And there is a reassociation of this cell with this body. So in that sense, if you say reincarnation, it makes a better sense. That you were associating with one body before, okay? now you are associating with another body. So it is the reincarnation of the self, but not rebirth. The birth is that of the body, not the self. So if you understand this, you know, the coexistence of the self, I and the body, then even now you can realize that I am ensuring this association by way of my choice. And that is why I had asked you to do this simple experiment of asking your body not to breathe. Right? Then what happens? The body stops breathing. Right? When it starts getting suffocated, it keeps telling you that it is getting suffocated. <coughs> so at one point of time you only decide to let the body breathe. Right? That means you are willingly you know, keeping this association with your body. If you want, you can withdraw. <coughs> So, <coughs> this is by way of you know, your decision to associate with this body or to dissociate with the body. When you are dissociated with this body, right, to associate with some other body, you know, which is in the process of formation in the womb of the mother, okay, <coughs> that association can be defined. So, in that sense, it is reassociation with another body. So that is how it is. And in that also, if you see you know, the process, it takes around four and a half months to, you know, you know, for the formation of the brain to take place. So till the formation of the brain has taken place, you cannot, you know, dictate the body. Okay. So till almost 18 weeks, the body of the child is fully according to this, you know, body of the mother. Then after, if another self is associated with it, then there is some independent movement of this body, other than, you know, the you know, movement of the body of the mother. So this is around four and a half months when the self associates with this body. But anyway, question is, I can associate you know, with the body, the self can associate with another body which is in the process of formation in the womb of the mother. Any, any so form it is better body, to call it reincarnation. Any form of body, reassociation can be taken place in any form of body. <coughs> Example like uh, reassociated with a pig. <laughs> I, I, also, I also, you know, discussed about this. I said that you are living largely with this, selecting and testing. Right? 
that's living in animal consciousness, then you might think that the pig body, you know, may be a better <laughs> association to get the happiness out of this you know, sensation. Because when you look at these pigs, you know, lying all, you know, just deep into the mud, okay, and lying there for hours and hours, you think that how comfortable it is. So if you have this kind of feeling, then you might decide. You know. <laughs> yeah, but broadly speaking, this word which we use with animal consciousness, okay, has to do with this. Okay. Till you have moved into this, you know, ensuring happiness for the self through right understanding and right feelings. Okay. Till that has happened. Right? Before that you are still trying to achieve happiness through sensation. Right? That is living with animal consciousness. Till that happens, you are likely to associate with the body of the animal, right? Because you might think that you might get better sensation by association of the body of some particular animal. So as long as you are living in animal consciousness, you are likely to get back to this. You know, association with the animal body. So that is one reason why this transformation is so essential. Okay. I didn't want to say this you know, in the beginning because then it would keep frightening you. So we said, leave alone the next you know, association. In this association, we have to live like human beings. We have to live with continuity of happiness. And for that, this transition from animal consciousness to human consciousness is essential. And I think that is better to think in terms of, you know, our living as human beings, right? What we need to do for ensuring continuity of happiness and prosperity, right? And then to ensure that, first to ensure it for ourselves, for our people around and for everybody, then ensure it for the coming generation through education and sanskar. So that is a simple thing to do. But then you can see, you know, most of these questions which are asked now, okay, are very typical to human beings. These are not the concerns of anyone. <laughs> because this knowledge, this gyan, is one of the fundamental requirements of human beings. That is why we said, this right understanding is something which is the first priority of human beings. So all these questions are important for us. And we need answer for them. Right? Do you think it is essential for the human being only or for animals also? Animals. I think we have discussed a lot about this Felix. I don't know, by asking this question, I am going to be the first candidate for the next workshop, I don't know. Uh, so far, uh, in our relationships, uh, we have the kind of uh, forgiveness or sacrifice. I don't know whether uh, it is fitting there or still I have to go and attend the second, uh, you know, workshop, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, this feeling of forgiveness and this feeling of sacrifice. This feeling of forgiveness, if you have to place this you know, here, you can see when we were talking about trust, we said that if we have trust on intention and if the other person is lacking competence, okay, what will you do? Will you get irritated? Will you get angry? Did you have a feeling of opposition? Or you will try to improve his competence. No, try to improve his competence, right? That means, if I have this trust and intention, then not only I will forgive, right? I will also feel the responsibility of improving upon his competence. Right? So this forgiveness will be a part of 
part and parcel of this building of trust. Where not only that I forgive, I take the responsibility, right? or at least I feel the responsibility to improve upon the competence of the others.